reporting today from the Royal Melbourne Zoo regarding the sustainability of the relationship between humans and orangutans. For many years a zoogoer's favourite, the orangutan is native to Indonesia and Malaysia on the human inhabited islands of Borneo and Sumatra. However, the relationship between humans and orangutans is much more complicated than a simple trip to the zoo. Orangutans are members of the great ape family that live in the dense rainforests of Borneo and Sumatra with a lifespan of up to 50 years. The orangutans on these two islands are in fact distinctly different species and the only two species found on Earth. Whilst mostly reclusive from humans, orangutans in some communities have become comfortable interacting with humans, even learning to copy many behaviours. Sadly, however, due to the decline of their population, the black market trade for orangutans is a growing industry. A major cause of this deforestation is things like bees in our supermarkets, and the costs we might save here may actually end up costing us more in the long run. Due to deforestation, clearing land for domestic industry such as palm oil plantations and the creation of paper and other tree-based materials, the Borneo orangutan's population has fallen by more than 50% over the last 60 years, while at least 55% of its habitat has disappeared over the last 20 years. The Sumatran orangutan densities have fallen reportedly by up to 60% with even selective logging methods. As a result of the continuing diminishment of their habitat from this deforestation, the long-term sustainability of these orangutan populations is currently at significant risk. The World Wild Fund for Nature, or WWF, has estimated that within our lifetimes we may even see the species extinct in the wild. As major spreaders of seeds throughout their habitat due to their droppings, the loss of orangutans would serve to sever the movement of plant species across the rainforest and damage long-term survival of these delicate ecosystems. Furthermore, the loss of this species may not simply be about their own right to live, but a sobering indication about what we as a species are willing to do to those around us. Whilst technically meeting the standards of domestication, such as flexible diet, a fast growth rate, the ability to be bred in captivity, a pleasant disposition, and a modifiable social hierarchy, wild orangutans nurse from their mothers for six years and have been found to show a significantly higher capacity to display aggressive behavior when raised under domesticated circumstances. Given the relative size and strength of orangutans, the potential for critical incidents with humans is too high for domestication. Despite their threat in these cases, in the wild orangutans are timid and gentle by nature, posing no direct risk to humans. Experiments using mirrors have displayed that orangutans are capable of self-recognition, displaying a sense of self-awareness that has been recognized as indicative of high intelligence. Rapid facial mimicry during play and the development of distinct cultures between troops also shows a direct, almost human intelligence. As difficult as it is to perceive intelligence within animals other than humans, the evidence often suggests that orangutans are highly intelligent. Unfortunately, due to growing populations in Malaysia and Indonesia, as well as widespread poverty throughout the regions, the need for deforestation will continue to grow and the relationship held between humans and these majestic creatures will become even less sustainable. It appears that without direct intervention by welfare organisations, such as the Sumatran Orangutan Conservation Program, and Borneo orangutan survival, there is a significant chance that our relationship with orangutans may one day only be in our zoos. I've been Will, and that's the end of my report on the orangutans and the sustainability of our relationship. <laughs>